it's a big box. Um, I guess I will put it down next to me since I don't have a nice uh, spot on the floor like Emma Carr does when she opened the box. I did not think this box would be as big as Anne's box, but it is. Thank you, Susan. I'm already overwhelmed in a good way. Yeah, next week, the kiddo goes back to school, and I've been thinking, oh boy, so I can go back a thrifting again, but the box this big, I probably won't have to go thrifting. Let's see, we have a letter. Yes, we are cat people. And the kiddo will appreciate anything. It's okay that you forgot anything for Chip. Chip's favorite toys are crumpled up pieces of paper and large pieces of uh, the reusable kitty litter that he knocks out of the box. He's not uh, picky about his cat toys. Uh, don't worry, my handwriting is awful. I can actually read just about anybody's handwriting because sometimes I have to struggle to read mine, so I have fun deciphering. Thank you. Okay, lots of cloth, I see. Fun cloth. Pretty cloth. Retro cloth. These go pretty well to go. Of course, you know me, I'll mix anything. My, my overarching print mixing ethos is if you sew it together, it goes together. I do have like a more elaborate systems for figuring out. Oh, that's pretty. It's pretty William Morris. Uh, systems for figuring out, like, okay, you have fig, you have florals, you have figurals, and you have geometrics, and you can mix one with the other, but don't mix two of the same. But and if they have a related color, that's fine, or have completely unrelated colors. But but overall, it's if it, you sew it together, it goes together. Cuteness. Probably a skirt for a doll, even a larger doll. I had so much stuff like this in the 80s. I see some things that are supposed to be very 80s and I look at it and think well, we didn't dress like that in the 80s. But the paint splats are a genuine 80s thing. A piece of very nice eyelet. Oh yes, it's so nice you can't really tell the front from the back. But it's always appreciated. And you know it doesn't take a lot to make doll clothes. It might be a shirt, it might be a skirt. That's a very elegant combination. I'm just smiling because I love mobs. And this is a nice pastel. I actually don't have a lot of pastel cloth that I bought for my dolls because I'm so attracted to bright colors. But then when I sew, I find that I want pastels for a lot of my dolls. This will work as a pastel. And those go together pretty well. Of course, like I said, I think everything goes together. <laughs> it almost looks like fossils. Of course, a uh, pink and black plaid is going to be a very good very good print for me. Smaller pieces are never a problem. Even if I don't use these for doll clothes, if I end up using them for patchwork, that's still fine. Patchwork is fun. I think I've had some brown gingham, but the brown gingham I had, no, what I had was hound's tooth, tiny brown hound's tooth. And it was really polyester. So this will be nice to use something with much less polyester for dolls. We can pretend that's not Christmas and use it for all your stuff. These though, definitely Christmas, but can be fun. Lovely piece of velvet, red velveteen. So I need to stop looking at things and thinking what I can make from it while I'm looking at it and save that for later. The kiddo 
y'all mainly only know Spongebob as a meme, the whole two hours later thing from people he watches on YouTube. I had to dress this color in high school. I had to be um, a, uh, an arch bearer. That's when the girls with the highest grades in junior class held up arches for the seniors to walk through and for the graduating year. We went to the uh, the prom dress store and bought the cheapest used dress we could find. But I still have fond memories of blue satin because of that. I actually think these might be a fun combination. I always like a fine whale corduroy for doll use. Oh, that's a good color. Now, there's enough of it here. I could use this in something for me. I've been meaning to make vests again lately. I don't know why. I like lived in vest in high school. I graduated in 1992. Had so many tapestry vests. It's not that I miss it, and I don't. Almost never. I say I almost never wear button-up shirts. Why I'm wearing a button-up shirt today. But sometimes, I mean, vests are very easy to make too. You can be ridiculous with vests. And I could line any color vest I wanted with this. Of course, purples are always useful, and this looks like a large amount of... Oh yes, this will be useful. Yeah, this is definitely going to go into my... Um... I wonder... Ooh! I have had a plan for a few years that I've been slowly moving toward to make a motorcycle jacket out of um, large floral shints. And I found the gents first, thrifted of course, it's like blue with purples and pinks. And then I actually found one of the rare times that Berta patterns were on sale at Joanne. That was right when a Berta motorcycle jacket had come out. So I have the pattern, I just don't have a really good lining for it. And this would be a perfect lining for that, and I have a feeling there's enough here. I just, I don't... You know, I've talked about me being impatient. I usually jump right into things. And I would, left to my own devices, I would jump straight into making that jacket from that cloth. But I know I need to, I need to trace the pattern pieces off onto um, butcher, not butcher paper, freezer paper. So I don't have to pin to the cloth because pinning ships things. And, and pattern weights, if you don't have enough pattern weights, which I don't, I just start using everything from around the room for pattern weights, can lead to shifting. So I could iron on the freezer paper and cut out that way. And I, I have a whole stack of other jackets I want to make before I get to my ultimate floral motorcycle jacket. But, <laughs> you know, I'd rather do the quick project. Cowboy prints are always fun. I went through my retro phase. I had my cowboy prints then. This would be good lining for something made out of that. And now I see socks. And can I cat have I you yeah, I know I've mentioned how much I love socks because I talk about thrifting socks. This is fantastic. And this is fantastic. I don't have enough pastel socks. So... I mean, maybe you sent me these to use for doll clothes, because I could still do it, but I, I would wear these socks. I would completely wear these socks. I can't tell. Are these just splotches, or are these fish? Oh, these are kids. So, yes, splashes and fish. I will tell you though, the kiddo likes tacky socks too. At Aldi today, they had kid socks, and I thought, we'll just buy him this kid socks back to school. And I said, all right, here's the boys' socks, here's red and black set, and here's a blue and green set. And he said, well, I want the red and black set, but I also want the set over there that's pink and blue and purple. So, he would wear these, no problem. Of course, dark quirks.
And I will give these niece, these toe socks to the kiddo. Um, Cause I have webbed toes and I actually physically cannot wear toe socks. Or I might cut these off and make them arm warmers. Let's see. Or yeah, I guess I could use them for doll clothes too, but I can be a little greedy and have things for me. You've been paying attention to me. You know my colors, my color schemes. And the kind of things I'm likely to wear. Some of these I might have to fight the kiddo off of. Yeah, perfect. Fight the kiddo off of because he, like I said, he loves a tacky sock too. And then the lace. I remember when you sent Anne her box, there was so much lace. Oh, let's see zippers. I can never have enough zippers either, especially vintage colors. Cranberry. Is that a pale? Oh, that's white. Oh, it just looks pink because it's reflecting off of me. Purple. Is that Adam red? Red rouge. Oh, just red. Pink holes. Oh yeah, you're in, you're from Canada. Everything that you get up there has English and French on it. Forget about that. I mean, it's not like everything in the U.S. doesn't have English, French, and Spanish for the large part. I am trying to sew more. I'm trying to do more things right. I need to learn how to use invisible zippers because I know they are fantastic for doll clothes because they disappear and they're lightweight. Oh, is this a... Oh, carding and zipper are good. My thing lately has been making jackets. And that has a great zipper pull. I'm just babbling to myself at this point, aren't I? Everybody's turned it off because they're just here for the dolls. Lace, lace. Pretty eyelet. Pretty ecru. Pretty ruffle. Please. No, it just has a really interesting edge to it. Okay. Since I cleaned out, I rearranged my um, lace storage bag recently. Sorry, I have a habit of just squeezing the air out of plastic bags because I'm usually cramming so much together that all the air has to be out of it. It's a good printed laces, multicolor. Pale lace. You don't need a lot for dolls, of course you know that. And more eyelets. Oh, this is feels like it's very really nice. Oh yes, this is really soft. I'm since I'm a cheapskate, I usually just end up with cheap eyelet. It's really scratchy, but this is very soft. It has a good drape. embroidered nylon laces too, or trims, I guess it's not really lace anymore. I have very small lengths of it, but this probably going to end up on ball jointed doll clothes. Might even sew several together to make like a whole skirt overlay out of just this. I've done that with lace in the past, sewn strips of lace edge to edge together to make a larger piece of lace, and I like the way it turns out, but then I always forget to do it the next time I'm ready to. So it all goes. Oh, this is great. Big blobby scallop face. So this looks like it's just enough to end up on a 60 centimeter doll skirt, too. Pretty much, I mean, I am talking through this because I'm trying to be entertaining, but. Everything I look at, this goes through my head, is how can I use it? How does it compare to things I've had before? How would it work with things I already have and do with? That's kind of how I evaluate everything. And I've been thinking, since the kiddo's going back to school next week, that I would be thrifting again. But with a box like this, I don't think I'm going to need to go thrifting. Like, I've barely made a dent in it. Oh, a bunch of vintage trim still on the card. Including more printed lace, peachy pinky laces. 
I love these vintage packaging because the graphic design is, you know, as I'm recording this in, it's almost August of 2017, there's been, there have been a few years where people hated the font Helvetica, but now it's returning to be trendy. Not only is Helvetica trendy, but it's just like black Helvetica on a stark white background. But what I love about this older stuff is that's when they were still using Futura. And I love Futura. I will take Futura over Helvetica any day. I mean, there is some Helvetica, but it's a lot of it is Futura. And it's just, I don't know what it is about Futura that I like so much. I don't think it's just the name Futura, but it could be. Oh yeah, this one will be fun to do what I was talking about, sewing it edge to edge. And I know really this should be cut apart in the center and be two pieces. Or it could be fold over lace. I could do a fold over too. But if you like sew this edge to edge, where you offset it so the scallops interlock, then you can actually start making shirts and things out of it. I actually have the the head I sent off for Josh to repaint, which he has finished and it's on its way back now, which I'm excited and I redressed the body, <laughs> getting ready for her to be here. And that's wearing a shirt that I made from lace pieced together like that. But I can't get it right now because there's a heavy box in the way. And more zippers. Oh, these are big heavy zippers too. Sewing notions and cloth, and of course, are some of those things that I just, I just can't resist. Is this another separating zipper? Oh, it is. Oh, it's a good long one, too, longer than I have. Thank you. See, I um, have been thinking, I repaired the kiddo's favorite hoodie. He lost the zipper pull. I finally replaced the zipper pull and also discovered that all the pins he'd had on it, the buttons and badges, had pulled holes in it. And I also discovered that the cloth I'd used to make the hoodie had a high polyester content in it, so it was really pilly, but he doesn't care. So after I replaced the zipper, I like made quick iron-on patches, like one with his name and one. We'd gone to the Lego store the other day, and I did that thing I'd seen online where you cut stuff out of the plastic bag and iron. It takes a while to find the right heat of the iron, and it might not have helped that my iron was on its way out when I was doing this project. But if you can find the right heat of the iron, you can bond the plastic with the underlying cloth. So I ironed some pieces from the Lego, Lego pieces from the Lego store bag onto just some white broadcloth. And then I cut that out and put fusible interfacing on the back. Not fusible interfacing, one or under. And then tacked that to the jacket over a bunch of holes and then zigzagged around that. And I did that with a few different things and I pulled out some patches and covered up some other holes. And then I put interfacing all over the back of it and then put all the buttons back on and then while I was doing that I realized I would love to have a jacket covered with buttons and patches but I would need a long zipper for the jacket that I'm thinking of so something like this could work come in very handy so I'm always thinking of projects to do even if I don't do them I'm always thinking of them and separating zippers oh this is a nice zipper this zipper has some history. It's obviously been used in something and taken out, and it is so heavy. The teeth are really interesting. I don't know if you see the teeth. If you're familiar with zipper teeth, these are a little different from normal zipper teeth. It's a little Colts and Clark zipper. My brain, people. And I suppose I'll be cutting out parts like this or I'm stopping things back in because who knows how long this video will be. All right, this is closed end. Oh, this. I think I have. Okay, so now I can use up my pink zipper that I have without worrying that I won't have any more separating pink zippers. I see lots of organza ribbon. I think I'd actually had some pink about like this, but it is almost gone. And you know, it tend to hold on to the last little bits, but now I can use that. And I was actually thinking of, where'd you go? 
tying a bow on her tail, but I was thinking I don't have any appropriately pastel ribbon of the right size, but now I do. So I might, next time you see her, she might have a bow on her tail, and I was also thinking maybe a necklace and a bracelet or two. Because pink pastel sparkles is just the beginning on something like this, right? You can always go more. I'm also trying to think of where I might be able to um, do some rhinestones. Maybe. I mean, there's restraint, but then there's fun, too. And some more pastel ribbons and a whole bunch of this. Let's just say what the color of this is. No, just 720. I like seeing the color names they give things. This might be good for a pastel Halloween project. And then we're back to more cloth. Oh wait, there's some lace that had gotten away. Nice wide lace. Lots of header on it. Of course, stuff like this I just automatically turn into petticoats for dolls, slips, ruffles, because it's a fun, easy project where I can use a lot of lace. And then I use it constantly because I do put a lot of, like, her. Which I got some lovely fan art of this doll from Fritra. Fritra, again, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, it was on my Tumblr, but I guess I could put it on um, Instagram too. Really good fan art of that doll. And it really emphasized her roughly fluffy slip. Okay, now what appeared to be just more cloth has stuff inside. So this is going to be a double first. This can create trick-or-treat cloth with what almost looks like all sorts on it, which is so not American that I think it's hilarious, but maybe they're not all sorts. And what was wrapped up inside was another kitty. Like I said, pretty much all my Monster High that I'm doing anymore is cats. So this is lovely. Gotta stop playing, gotta keep <laughs> opening. So easily distracted. Okay. I'm going to try not to look at what falls out because this is great cloth. Let's see which way is the yard. Okay, this way is. If you ever worry about the, the grain on doll cloth, if you know about the grain, it has to do with the way cloth is woven. And the crosswise from selvage to selvage is a little bit stretchy, but from end to end it doesn't stretch. So if you ever have a piece of cloth like this with no selvage on it, no hint of the direction, and you have a pattern that's telling you to pay attention to the grain, because even with doll clothes you can go off the grain and it won't make much of a difference, but with human clothes, the more off the grain you are, the weirder things might drape. So it just stretches a little bit. So there's more useless, well not useless, more me babbling to try to entertain you. We have a My Little Pony, and I'm sorry, I don't know their names. But I haven't actually ever customized one of these. I do know a little girl who loves these. So I might pass this on to that little girl instead of having me run rampant and destroy it. Because she's in great shape. Are you distracted? again. I think this is cloth that I had at the beginning but is now buried under everything so I can't see it anymore. But this is, I mean, a good chintz like this. English roses. That's what I'm thinking of making that motorcycle jacket out of. And inside there was another kitty. And so far, nothing's broken. I know Susan was a little worried, I think, that things might have got broken in transit, but but the uh, the post offices. 
I know some people have horrible problems with the post office and that get things broken and get terrible letter carriers, but I like my post office. I like the post office. I've never had any problems with the post office that other people have not had with um, post office alternatives like UPS and FedEx. And I would say DHL, although DHL doesn't do much in the U.S. It does some, but not a lot. But I know DHL is out there. What is this print? Alright, it says Warner Brothers, but I'm afraid know this property. What's the year? It doesn't have the year. It just says Warner Brothers. I'm sure I will look it up while the video is uploading, but I'm sure that someone else will look at this and know what it is immediately. It's some wrestling kiddos thing. And I know several people who like wrestling. But I don't know about that. Oh, a very Canadian giant cup. Which I think that, yeah, this will go to the kiddo because he loves his cups. And I can put a lot of ice in here and a little bit of water. I do recognize a lot of this stuff. I'm not a completely a self centered American. The joke I make is that I am one quarter Canadian. <laughs> My grandfather was from Nova Scotia. But really, all that means is now I say sorry and tomorrow instead of sorry and tomorrow. And oh, that's a pretty hair color. You know, I've never had Torah lies before people send them to me recently. I don't even know. Again, I will look it up. I'm so out of touch, I don't even know which Torah lie this is. I forgot that she has. Does she have different colors on her? Yeah, she does have different colors on her face. They're just really subtle. I'm getting distracted, I'm getting distracted, but... At this point, I've probably split this video into multiple parts because I feel another tail. And we have some more Spongebob cloth. I can make a Spongebob jacket for somebody. Oh, I know. I have a friend. Her birthday is tomorrow. I'm not going to miss it. I don't want to make something for her. At least, at least 15 years ago, she liked Spongebob. I actually hadn't heard from her for a while, and then she found me on Instagram. And so... The original Caddy, which I have, but I have been afraid to customize her much. So... <laughs> I'll probably cut a lot of this hair off and use it for other dolls, but then I might. I've I've seen reroutes of Caddy with black hair, and they're fantastic. Of course, I've also seen the customs of the Caddy head on Widona's body, and that is a different kind of fantastic. Somebody was wrapped in this. This box never ends. What's inside? Good stripe. That could be Halloween. Ah, oh, it's a Novi Stars! I've had Novi Stars and then I've let go of them and I already always wish I kind of still had them. She doesn't light up anymore, but that's fine. Oh, yes, yeah, she does. She does light up. It's too bright in here. I mean, I would try to hybridize them with other things, but I think at this point, I accept Novi Stars for what they are. But, who knows, I might still try to hybridize this head on something, because I've seen other people posting Novi Stars lately that have been hybridized. And, they're cute. Thank you, you give me the second chance on some dolls that I did not give myself a second chance with before. Alright. Before I unwrap this, I'll say my kiddo loves penguins, so I can make something. I might even be able to make uh, 
pajama pants for him. They'd be off grain, but again, if we're pajama pants, I don't think it matters. Oh, no, no, they wouldn't be off grain, because there's the sewage. Oh, no, they would be on grain. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm making pajama pants for my kiddo. I mean, they have, they have you know, Christmas trees and stuff, but he doesn't care. We're not about gender, strict gender roles in clothes, and we're not about strict holiday observation because I'm one of those Halloween all year people. I actually have some vintage 1970s, doll hair, 70s um, kids' pajama patterns, so in theory I could make him a pajama shirt too. But both those pieces of penguin cloth contain some fantastic boxes of beads, which I love beads too. I have to resist buying beads or else I will have so many beads, but if I am not in a mood to do doll stuff or to sew, I really, I really have been wanting to get back to making jewelry. Again, smaller beads are good for doll jewelry. If, if you're not familiar with my general approach to making jewelry, is put 200 things on a chain and then take another chain and put 200 more things on that and then take another chain and put 200 more things on that okay maybe only 50 things per chain but still and then take two or three more chains with nothing else on them and put them all together on the same necklace and stuff like this is really good for that kind of very slapdash approach like everything is slapdash you can these down